ago, a man boarded a train in New Haven, Connecticut, heading north. The final destination of that locomotive was Boston. In between, there were various stops along the way. Old Saybrook, Mystic, Westerly, Kingston, and Providence. The last stop of this young student athlete well, only he really knew for sure. Why did Sly get off the train in Kingston instead of Providence College, as was thought to be his final stop? What happened in between those stops has become that of folklore, myth, and urban legend. Tonight, you may find the real story. We'll take a look back at the journey that led to a colorful career and explore the controversy behind the legend of how Sly Williams became a Rhode Island Ram. was undoubtedly one of the best players ever to put on a Rams uniform. His journey began on the playgrounds and backyards of New Haven, Connecticut. Well, so I know this is the old neighborhood and this is where you grew up, but you had a large family. Tell me what life was like uh, growing up in this house and in this neighborhood. Well, the neighborhood, first of all, was a beautiful neighborhood 40 years ago. It was wonderful, you know, I, I grew up in this house right here, a three family. Uh, on the second floor, I remember a lot of great times uh -huh. with a big family of, of 12 brothers and sisters. And uh, we just enjoyed ourselves. It was kind of tight, you know, as you know, <laughs> a lot of, no room there. But it was, it was uh, fabulous, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, my mother, by her being a single parent, you know, uh, she raised us and did the best that she could. And uh, it, it was just wonderful time growing up here, yeah. no problem. Yeah, and I know one of the things that's great about living in, a, in the inner city is that everything is close by. I know you have your recreation center right next door. Yes. You had the park where you started playing right across the street. Yes. So everything was very contained, and so you must have had really great neighbors as well. Oh yeah, you know, uh, the neighbors around here were wonderful. It was like a a village. They all helped out in uh, helping uh, us when we were in trouble. We all knew it. My, everybody had a hand in, you know, chastising you and, and getting you back on the right track. And, and it was just a, a wonderful community to uh, uh, live in. Right, and that's the key. It was, it was a community. You had a neighborhood where people kind of looked after you. Everybody was really close. Almost like a huge extended family throughout the entire neighborhood. Yes, it was. It was, uh, and those were, I call them, the, those were the good old days. Now, playing, playing basketball in the inner city <laughs> these days is very different than it was when we were playing. Yes. Okay, because the playground and the recreation center, that was it. That's where you kind of got started to get your rep where a lot of kids are playing AAU basketball now. But when did you first start to get the sense of the feeling that you were pretty good at this basketball thing? And when did other people start to notice that? Because I know it probably started to have it right in this playground. Yes, it did. Um, I started to actually develop and started, my skills are starting to hone in. I was just constantly out here when nobody was out here dribbling the ball, shooting the ball. Just being at the park all day, as, I, as you can see at the recreation center and also here at the park. Now at this park, it was always, it's not a basketball court here now, right. but it was a nice big basketball court running along this way right here. Yeah. And I would come out here every day in the summer, even uh, in the winter when we would come out here and shovel and be out here shooting baskets, <laughs> and hands freezing, everything is freezing. We're waiting for the rec center to open up. But you know, the guys that I grew up with, we, this is what we did. There was uh, 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 
a guy. He was a. Uh, his name is uh, Dave Newton. Okay. He was trying. Uh, he I went to college and he he went to camp with the Boston Celtics. But then he stopped playing basketball with my brother. Then as is that as, Dave? Yeah. Okay. He stopped playing with Dave, and Dave was having the tryouts with his team. That team, the Sly, would play him, play him every day. They played. I would play against him all the time when he come when he come back from the camp. You know, he got cut a couple of times, and he comes back, and I would play against him. And I started to notice that I was starting to get good. So then when he stopped beating Dave, <laughs> <laughs> then it became apparent that he was going to be a basketball player. You know, right. I started to notice that even if they hit me, I wouldn't cry, I wouldn't do this. Um, I can dribble the ball, I can run around him. And it, I started getting more confidence in myself. and knowing that I could play with the older guys because I really never played with somebody my age at that time. I always right. played against older people. And I think that helped me out a lot because, you know, as I'm playing, I'm learning from them. And, and that was the biggest thing is it was fun, but it was also a learning experience right, that yeah. I always kept the knowledge of what was going on. So it, it was like a camp. Alex Howard back and forth with Smith. A minute 34, Sly Williams shoots and hits. That's a pretty shot to watch. Sly Williams, there's two. That's a goal penalty violation if you hit any part of the basket right. of the rim more than that. I didn't see it either. And Sly Williams bats it away and out of bounds. Five seconds. Look for him. Looking for Williams. Yes, yes, yes. When he went to Lee, I didn't know who Sly was, because we call him Sylvester. Right. So they kept, a friend of mine named Jim Brown, he said, you got to come see Sly play. I said, who's Sly? <laughs> he said, he played for Lee. I said, I don't know nobody named Sly. So I went down there, and, and it was him. That's when I first got, started calling him Sly. I never knew that name until he started playing for Lee. He came in as a freshman, and I was a young kid myself. I was in my late 20s, and I'm coaching this inner city team. and. Uh, his name